Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to spend a little bit more time um, on linear regression in a very, very simple case of one independent and one dependent variable. Um, uh, basically, it's a continuation of the previous lecture where um, we have derived basically the formula um, for um, the slope of this linear regression, this dependency, which I will remind you right now. Um, well, this lecture, as uh, all others, are part of the um, advanced math uh, for um, teenagers and high school students. Um, this course is presented on unizor.com. I recommend you to watch this lecture and all other lectures from the website because every lecture has very detailed notes and for registered students you also can take exams and obviously enrolling is also part of the functionality so basically the whole educational process can be um, facilitated using this website all right now back to linear regression so let me just remind you um, what was done in the previous lecture which is basically the foundation for a very very simple exercise with data which I'm going to present like a problem basically something which you have to prove preferably you will prove it just by yourself first and then you can listen to this lecture I, I do encourage you to do that I mean if you didn't try it try it first go to the text the, the notes for this particular lecture on unizor.com it's all explained there so try to basically solve this problem just by yourself and again it's using the lecture which was before let me remind you what it is now let's consider we have a um, situation when there is a dependent variable random variable y values of which we assume are almost linearly dependent on independent variable x and this is the linear dependency but I said almost because not necessarily each value of x if substituted into this formula with certain fixed a and b will result in the value of y of y there are some other factors which affect the value of y and all these factors are summarized in some random variable uh, which should be added to this which you can c you can consider as as an error um, or small additional factors which um, actually force y to deviate from this exact dependency on on x now where a where epsilon is presumed to be a normally distributed uh, random variable with um, mathematical expectation zero and some variance now minimizing this variance is the problem which we have solved in that lecture before by choosing proper a and b well let's forget about b for a second let's talk about a that's the most important part of it b is just a constant so what is basically the slope of this linear dependency this variable a so what i have suggested as a calculation methodology for a which would uh, minimize the error we can actually talk about minimization of the error minimization of the deviation of y from this line so here is what was suggested during the lecture for instance we have statistical data for x and statistical data for y they are x1 x2 etc xn y1 y2 etc yn so what I suggested first is let's calculate the average of both so the u is average of um, xn v is average of y v 
then then I suggested to centralize our data which means consider x1 uh, well, it equals to lowercase x1 minus u um, and x2 etc all so with capital X I have this situation now why capital X is better than lowercase x now u is a constant which we basically calculate once we know these data right so we calculate the average and we subtract this average from each of those guys and we consider uppercase x1 etc xn now the advantages of this is that average of these is equal to zero of course right because it's the sum of these and sum of these sum of these is is this and sum of these is equal to n times n times n so if you will subtract them you will have exactly zero now similarly with y I will use uppercase y1 which is lowercase minus v uppercase y2 is lowercase etc and uppercase n is equal to lowercase and same st same story with with uh, with capital uh, y's their average is equal to zero now using these new uh, variables capital X and capital Y instead of lowercase I have come up with a formula for a the one which minimizes it's a very convenient formula and some summarization of course by i from 1 to n so it's x1 y1 plus x2 y2 etc plus x1 xn yn and this is the sum of squares of these guys now let's talk about the problem right now the one which i would like to present uh, in, in this particular lecture the problem is related to the following fact sometimes in some textbooks or websites um, the final formula is not expressed in terms of capital X, Y, but in terms of lowercase x and y, original data. And it looks obviously differently. So let me just tell you how it looks in most of the textbooks. They suggest it as the following. Um, it's x y average minus x average times y average divided by x square average minus x average square now the bar on the top means averaging um, now in case of uh, average x is the same thing as we were doing before something which we have designated as letter u now y is y1 plus yn divided by n that's what we designated as v now x uh, square average is x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xn so all of them are squared and uh, what else xy and xy average is x1 y1 plus x2 y2 plus etc plus xn yn divided by n so these are averages sometimes if you want you can use a function called average that's what I'm doing in my uh, notes average of let's say X is the same thing X1 plus etc plus Xn divided by n so it's sometimes it might be a little bit confusing about with all these bars on the top uh, with this function it's a little bit better looking 
um, on the web. So that's why I'm using this particular function. But it means exactly the same. Doesn't really matter. So let's use this bar on the top to signify the averaging. So my question is, are these the same? Well, again, this is just a very easy exercise in um, data manipulations. And um, basically, all I want to do is to prove that this is the same as this, right? All right, so let's just try to decipher. These are presumably lowercase, the original data, right? As explained here. And this is the uppercase, which are central, centrally shifted original data. All right, so let's just substitute whatever we know um, instead of xi, it's um, expression um, using u and yi using v and that would be the following it would be sigma xi minus u times yi minus u divided by sigma xi minus u squared, right? That's our definition of capital X and capital Y. They are original minus, okay, I think I made a mistake here. That's supposed to be V, obviously, the average of Ys. So this is just um, uh, replacement capital X and capital Y with their original meaning as it was explained in the uh, previous lecture and in the beginning of this one. Now how can this be converted into this? All right, let's just open the parenthesis. So what happens? <coughs> now each uh, particular term in this sum is um, a combination of four uh, different terms. One of them is x i y i, right? Minus u y i minus v x i and plus u v and sigma summation is by i from 1 to n. Now here I will also open the parenthesis, the square, so I will have square x1 square, I mean xi square, minus 2u xi plus u square. Right? That's what it is. Okay. And this is equal to now summation. Now, uh, sum of these four is actually four of the sums, right? So I put sigma in it into each one of them. So that sigma of this one, then minus u, I can take out from the sigma because it's just a constant multiplier times sigma y i right minus v sigma x i and plus u v now here I will also convert it into three different sigmas first is sigma x i square minus 2u sigma xi and plus u square okay equals all right sigma xi yi we re retain as it is minus what is sigma of yi well that's n times v right 
So it's 2 n uh, u v. Oh, I forgot one thing, by the way. It's not plus uv, it's sigma uv. Right? Because sigma is going for each one of those guys. Now, um, so that's this one. Now this one, minus sigma of xi is n times u. So it's minus, now why did I put 2? Oh, that I missed it from denominator. No, just regular one. It's this one. Sigma of y is n v, and there is a u. Now here is also n v u. And plus, now this is the constant summarized n times, so it's n u v. That's what in my numerator. Now in denominator I have sigma x i square minus 2 u and I made the same mistake here. It's not just u square, it's sigma u square. Sorry about that. Alright, now 2 u and this is n u. And this is Again, we are summarizing constant n times, so it's n u square. Okay. Great. Now, sigma x i y i, I can actually replace with n times average x y, right? So, in my numerator I will have n x y average instead of this one. Now, this one, now this, look at this, minus n u v and minus n u v and plus n u v, right? So, what do I have? I have mi minus n times u v. Now, u and v are average x and average y. Okay, that's it. Now, in the denominator I have sum of x i square, sum of x y square is n times average of x square. Now this is minus 2 n u square and plus n u square, so it's minus n u square, so it's minus n and u square is uh, minus n u square, it's uh, n u square is average of x square, so it's x square square, x average square, that's what it is. Okay? So, as a result, what do I have? Well, basically I have this, because all I can do right now, I'll just reduce it by n and I have this formula so this was just a very uh, simple exercise of uh, dealing with data now regardless of its simplicity you really have to be very careful because as I was just doing it I myself made a small mistake then I realized I made a mistake I forgot to put sigma so what did I use for instance in this um, I was using that sum of sums is equal to sum of the, uh, of the sums of... <laughs> it's difficult to say. Okay, sigma of sums is equal to sum of sigmas. How about that? Um, because this is a summarization by index and this is summarization between terms. So that's kind of obvious thing. Same thing is uh, on the bottom. And you should not forget that this constant should actually also be summarized because there is a sigma in front of everything so it's n times that's what, that's what I made a small mistake actually but anyway so my point was that our initial formula which was let me just remind you 
uh, I'm using capital X I Y I divided by sigma X I square and this is the lower case actually I should not put X like this all right so this formula looks a little bit simpler than this one it's easier to deal with centralized um, with centralized random variables so that's why I decided I will centralize it first and then I got the simple formula but for those who, who, who saw in textbooks or anything like this uh, formula of this type it's exactly the same thing so this particular um, little exercise was just to prove that this and this are exactly the same well that's basically it for uh, for today I just again wanted to join uh, forces with some uh, textbook um, information which you might obtain somewhere else and prove that this is exactly the same all right that's it for today thanks very much and uh, by the way I do recommend you maybe if you didn't do it before try to do again the same thing just by yourself to prove that one formula is exactly the same as this formula these are capital X and Y which are centralized which means from each data we have subtracted the average and this one is not centralized and that's why we have a little bit more complex um, expression for this particular thing okay that's it thanks very much and good luck <laughs>